Hello! Today we will focus on the basics of the U.S. core market. We will discuss its primary demand and supply drivers. We begin with an overview of the world and U.S. corn markets. Corn, also called maize in many languages, was first cultivated more than 7,000 years ago in Mexico, before spreading throughout North and South America. Today corn has multiple uses for human consumption, livestock feed, converted into fuel ethanol, and made into plastic. Global corn production was around 1.2 billion metric tons in 2021-22 marketing year. In case you are new to commodities, a marketing year is defined as a period of 12 months during which the commodity is produced, harvested, and sold. Marketing year spans calendar year and differ among commodities. Corn marketing year begins September 1st and ends August 31st. Prior to 1986, the marketing year began October 1st. The United States and China are the largest producers and consumers of corn in the world. 72% of exports are from the United States, Brazil, and Argentina, whereas primary importers are China, Mexico, Japan, and European Union. In 2021, U.S. produced about 15 billion bushels of corn, or 384,000 metric tons. One bushel of corn is 56 pounds. In U.S., corn is grown in most states, but is concentrated in the Heartland region. In 2021, 70% of corn was grown in Illinois, Iowa, Indiana, Kansas, Minnesota, Nebraska, and South Dakota. Illinois and Iowa are the largest corn-producing states, comprising about 31%. Corn is primarily used as a livestock feed and to make ethanol. Ethanol and feed use accounted for 72% of all corn use in 2020-21. Only 10% of corn is used in food. Corn is used in food to make cereals, starch, high fructose corn syrup, and other sweetness. Exports are 19%. Graph on this slide shows how the price of corn changed over time, both in nominal and real dollars. In nominal terms, the price of corn has been fluctuating in the 2 to $3 per bushel range between 1980 and 2006. The prices have been higher and more volatile from 2007 to 2021. In real terms, corn has become cheaper over time. When comparing corn prices in $2,000, we see that the price spike in 2012-13 is still below those in the early 1980s. When trying to estimate how the prices of corn will behave, one needs to analyze the factors that affect its demand and supply. From Economics 101, we remember that the market price is determined by intersection of demand and supply curves. The price can change when demand or supply curve move in or out. The components of corn supply are beginning stocks, production and imports, with the production being the largest component. Beginning stocks are what is carried over from the previous year. Large stocks can provide additional supplies in the low production year, while small stocks provide less. Production is determined by the amount of acreage harvested and the yield per acre. U.S. hardly imports any corn. In 2020-21 marketing year, U.S. imported only 0.2% of its total U.S. supply. Demand for corn comes from its use in food, seed, industrial processes, feeding the livestock, exports, and ending stocks. U.S. domestic corn use grew 2.5% on average during 1980-2021. Table summarizes the main demand and supply effects on corn prices. On the demand side, we have consumer preferences, prices of substitutes, exchange rates for exported corn, and government renewable energy mandates. On the supply side, we have government price support and subsidies, weather effects on yields, and technological advances. I describe each of these drivers in detail next. We start with consumer preferences. 
Use of high fructose corn syrup grew on average 6% during 1980-2001. High fructose corn syrup is cheaper than regular sugar, and to cut costs many companies chose to use it. However, high fructose corn syrup demand declined by 1.3% in the last 20 years due to reduced consumer preference who tried to limit their consumption of sweeteners. Some consumers also worry about health effects of genetically engineered corn, which represents about 92% of total U.S. corn planted in 2021. But more on GE corn later. Prices of corn substitutes impact demand for corn. Corn is the primary livestock feed and its use has been increasing over time. Corn accounted for 97% of all feed grains in U.S. in 2020-21 marketing year, an 11% increase from 1980-81. In any given year, feed use of corn depends on the number of animals on feed, the price of corn and the price of competing feed grains in feed wheat. Table on this slide shows that during 1980-2021, the prices of sorghum and oats increased more than the price of corn whereas the price of barley increase was similar to that of corn. Farmers chose to use a cheaper feed like corn. Another demand driver is the U.S. dollar exchange rate. U.S. exported 19% of its corn in 2020-21 marketing year. Depreciation of U.S. dollar relative to an importing country and its export competitor countries makes U.S. corn relatively cheaper and therefore, we can expect higher exports, whereas appreciation of U.S. dollar will make U.S. corn relatively more expensive, and we can expect a decline in export demand. USDA calculates trade-weighted or effective exchange rates for different agricultural commodities. To measure the value of the U.S. dollar relative to the currencies of major U.S. trading partners in a specific commodity market. This graph shows a U.S. competitor's exchange rate for corn for the period 2000-2021. During 2002-2011, U.S. competitor's index declined, which suggests that the U.S. was more competitive relative to other exporters of corn during this time. From 2012 and forward, U.S. competitor's index increased, making U.S. exports of corn less competitive relative to other exporters. The last demand driver I will discuss is government renewable energy mandates. Majority of industrial use corn goes to making ethanol and depends on government policies and incentives. Ethanol is the primary biofuel in the U.S., most of which being distilled from corn. Share of domestically produced corn allocated to ethanol production has increased from 6% in 2000 to 34% in 2021. The main driver for this increase has been expansion of renewable fuel policies in the U.S. The most important have been the establishment of the renewable fuel standards of mandating blending of 7.5 billion gallons of renewable fuel with gasoline by 2012 in Energy Policy Act in 2005, and then expanding these standards in the Energy Independence and Security Act of 2007 by setting a target of 36 billion gallons of biofuels to be produced and imported by the U.S. annually by 2022. Market corn prices have increased as a result of expanded ethanol production to meet renewable fuel standards. Economists have estimated that each billion gallon expansion in ethanol production yields a 2 to 3 percent increase in corn prices. Now we switch our focus to supply side. When deciding how much corn to plant, the producer compares corn's profitability with other competing crops like wheat or soy. Planted acreage is also influenced by government policies, for example, acreage reduction program and agronomic considerations such as crop rotations. The first supply driver I will cover is the government price support and subsidies. Historically, U.S. government has supported farmers' incomes through commodity price support, storage programs, and direct payments. The Farm Bill, a multi-year legislation, governs an array of agricultural and food programs. Major corn programs outlined in the Title I 
of 2018 Farm Bill include the price loss coverage and agricultural risk coverage programs and the marketing assistance loan program. PLC and ARC are subsidies that farmers can receive to offset lower revenues. Producers can only choose to participate in either PLC or ARC. PLC offers protection against a decline in the crop price, whereas ARC in the crop revenue. Farmers can also participate in marketing assistance loan program, which has been running since 1930s. MAL provides both a floor price and interim financing for certain commodities, which includes corn. Farmers can receive a nine month loan from a government by pledging some of their harvested crop as a collateral. For each bushel put under loan, the producer receives a payment equal to that year's loan rate. Under MAL program, the producer must keep the crop designated as loan collateral in approved storage to preserve crop's quality. The loan can be repaid at any time during the nine month period. If local prices are above the loan rate plus interest, a farmer would repay the loan and reclaim the crop. If market prices remain below the loan rate, then producers can either forfeit the crop, repay the loan at the lower rate, or take a loan deficiency payment in lieu of MAL. In the last 30 years, the loan rate has been consistently below market price. However, there were years during 1950s, 60s, and 80s when the market prices were below loan rates. This led to loan forfeitures and accumulation of large government corn stocks. And it created an environment where farmers were growing crops based on relative loan rates rather than market prices. Government corn stocks have influenced corn market prices as these stocks were not available in the marketplace. As a part of a general movement in U.S. agricultural policy towards more market orientation and to reduce government ownership of grains and oilseeds, additional program features were added in 1980s to avoid for feature of the crop under loan. Another supply driver is how weather affects corn yields. Yield per acre is determined by weather, soil, crop variety, and farm management. You can see an upward trend in the corn yields during the last 40 years. Westcott and Josen analyzed the impact of hot and dry summer weather on significantly reduced corn and soybean yields in 2012 growing season. They postulate that low precipitation and higher temperatures lead to lower yields, which in turn shift the supply curve to the left, raising the prices and reducing quantities demanded. Climate change means droughts and hotter temperatures will become a norm, and farmers will have to adjust to the changing conditions. Next, we talk about the technological advancements in corn production. Corn yields have increased by 95% from 91 bushels per acre in 1980-81 to 177 bushels per acre in 2021-22 driven in part by use of genetically engineered seeds that have a high yield potential. The first GE crop approved in the U.S. was the tomato in 1992. Today, most U.S. acres planted to GE crops have traits that provide herbicide tolerance and or insect resistance. These seeds became commercially available in 1996. Herbicide tolerant HT crops are able to tolerate important herbicides, allowing farmers to control weeds more effectively. Insect resistant or BT crops contain a gene that produces a protein which is toxic to certain insects, protecting the plant over its entire life. Figure illustrates how adoption of corn seeds that have either HT, BT or stacked, which is both HT and BT traits, changed in US in the last 20 years. Percent of G corn planted increased from 25% in 2000 to 92% in 2019. The main controversy surrounding GE crops is its effect on the environment and animal and human health. However, decades of testing GE crops in the lab and in livestock animals have not shown any adverse effects to date. 
To conclude this presentation, I will discuss coin stocks to use ratio and its price relationship. A common relationship used to analyze how the commodity's equilibrium price changes in response to supply and demand is by looking at the price and stocks to use ratio. Stocks to use ratio is calculated by dividing the ending stocks by total use. Total use is the amount of corn consumed as food and livestock feed, used in industrial processes, planted and exported. Ending stocks is defined as what is left from total corn supply for the year after subtracting total corn use. Changes in ending stocks are inversely related to price. If total use rises relative to supply, ending stocks decline and price increases, and vice versa. Historically, government programs have influenced how much corn to keep in inventory, either through direct government or private ownership. Ending stocks become beginning stocks the following year. Look at the scatter plot of average farm price versus stocks to use ratio for corn. As expected, lower stocks to use ratios are associated with higher corn prices, whereas increase in stocks to use ratio leads to lower prices. Due to a large expansion of ethanol production to meet renewable standards, it is prudent to look at the same chart but for two periods, 1980 to 2006 and 2007 to 2021. Splitting data into two subsamples shows different relationship between the corn price and the stocks to use ratio. In both periods, the relationship is negative, but the price response to a change in stocks to use ratio is much greater after 2007. Specifically, if we were to fit a simple linear regression line the slope would be steeper in the second period than in the first. Thank you for listening, and I hope you watch my other commodities basics videos.